All right, Tag TV fans, we're here at EA. We're gonna to talk to the Medal of Honor Warfighter team. Behind me is Dan Modich. He's a senior designer on the game. And we're gonna to talk to him about weapon balance in terms of balancing the effects and the capabilities of a given weapon system on the game. All right, Dan, take me through, what do you have, something here called the virtual range, is that correct? Sure. Where you yeah. tweak some of the guns? You talk bet. me through it, bro. Okay, so so this the range you're looking at here uh, probably won't ship with the game. This is just for us to kind of tune the weapons in. Um, and what you can see we have here, uh, obviously, is a uh, HK416. We have an ACOG side on it, and we have a three-quarter offset uh, irons. So if you go to the 416 and just uh, aim with it, okay, you can uh, you can zoom. That, that's the zoom that you get. And then if you press this button here, you'll yeah. transition to your irons. Okay. Now one so. thing I know you guys that that's acceptable for the iron switchover, but for the ACOG, you kind of have it out at aim point length for the eye relief so we can just uh we can pull that in how close in would you think you'd like it bring it on in i'll tell you all right let's try this how about can that you, can you get closer than that sure uh, not quite that just back it out of touch that's about right there you like that yeah you have a little bit of field of view around them but because you pay a price when you use an optic a fixed four power optic like yeah. an acog at, within you know, CQB distances, you pay you pay a serious price for that. That's why people like me and whatnot prefer at close ranges to use a reflex sight, like an aim point. Understood. And they, okay. this is where you engage something at distance, 50 meters, 75, 100 meters, and whatnot. Awesome. Um, you can use it closer, but there's kind of some different techniques for it. And that's why, one, you see the iron sights, and two, you see the piggyback option, which I know you guys are going to have in other parts of the game. If I'm using an aim point, the aim point's great up close. If I got to engage something at distance, there's a downside to it. So that's where a magnifier comes in or something like that. If I want to have the opt the ability to shoot something at distance, then I got to work at, okay, how do I really use this up close? Whether I, I take it back down to one power, as close to one power as possible, or I have something like a piggyback or the offset irons. Right. You just work with it as best you can. Okay, now to transition from yeah. long gun to pistol, you yeah. hit, hit this button, the yeah. Y. That's correct. And one thing I like, Based on this, I and mean, obviously it's a seal because he's shooting a SIG 226, is the time it takes. You have a realistic time, whereas in other games they do a very unrealistic fast transition. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean that's. I mean, the the, the guys that, the guys that, that pick our game are guys that want a real sort of experience. Right. Now, it still needs to be a video game. It still needs to be fun. But we try. We we will walk that line of realism to awesome gameplay. Uh, and that's really our goal. Uh, that, that, that's what we're trying to achieve. Basically, we have six different classes and they're all gonna have their strengths and weaknesses. They're designed to all cater to a player style. So some guys like to just run and they're, mm -hmm. they're like, you know what, you can have the armor, I just, I need speed and I need an assault rifle. Well, that's gonna be our assaulter guy, basically. Mm -hmm. We have fast guys, we have slow guys, we have guys that have sort of uh, more sort of niche kind of special abilities that you won't be able to use all the time. But certain players would rather have that yeah. feature than some of the other bells and whistles. So the guy that has the armor, he's giving up speed, he's giving up some flexibility with a, with like a weapon in the real system. World. I had the same, same thing in the real world. And he's not getting fancy kit. The other guy with the fancy kit had to give something up, so he, he gave up, you know, uh, some body armor and some other things. And then you have the, just a slick down guy, he's got a gun. He doesn't have much armor, but he's going to get from point A to point B real quick, and he's going to be able to come back around guys. So he's going to be ending around. He might have some advanced radar. He'll be able to know where you are. So even though you have the better system, a higher power weapon system, and a little bit more body armor, that son of a gun is moving, and he knows where you are. And you don't know where he is. Got it. So we do things like that to kind of balance it out. Yeah. Now, one thing we want to talk about for the folks at home is what extreme range is on the video game. And just like on TV, everything looks farther than it really is. Sure. So one of the, on the monitor, right. talk to me about you know long distance. Okay, well, human vision is about, 50, uh, is about 55 FOV. In our game, because most people don't have the benefit of a really widescreen monitor, so, so they're only getting to basically see, if you held your hands up like this, this is about what they can see. Right. You know, we can see this. So we have a 65 FOV. What that means is, is that our extreme range is about 70 meters, which obviously for a sniper is not very far. It is not very far. And with the way that we build our maps, we try to keep the combat close. We try to keep a very fast-paced game. Right. So we have to keep our ranges closer. Um, and that's why our extreme range is 70. You know, our medium range is about 25. Now, question I got is, yeah. do you have the ability that, depending on where somebody gets hit, 
that value is in place or if they get head on the edge it has to go up is that something you can do at this point i'm really glad you asked that this unattractive matrix here is what controls all that here's our mp7 here's our basic assault rifle 556 here's 762 here's our heavy machine guns uh light machine guns, minigun, shotgun, sniper, and sniper light. Um, and as we go, we'll add some more damage in there. And what we can do here is we can say, this is how much damage he does to an arm, mm -hmm. body. The body is from the neck basically down to the, the lower torso. And then we can put a body armor modifier Factor, on the body. Okay. So if the, we, we have classes that do wear body armor, and when they wear body armor, you can see right here, it's going to take, it's going to absorb half of that damage. Got it. Okay. Um, and then here's the modifier for the head. So most things will do double uh, the damage in the head. Double the damage in the head, unless you're talking about like something like a 300 wind mag, where you just that's it. If he hits you in the head. Well, case in point, like on the battle rifle, when you adjusted that matrix. Mm -hmm. That number to two, that gives it a two value, one shot in the head with a battle rifle and he's down, which reflects real world. Right. You know, in most scenarios, of course, yeah. there's dynamics you can't factor in, but that makes sense. Okay. We got rate of fire. Rate of fire comes from our sound crew. The guys go out, they record the weapons. We, we stay true to the weapon sound. Um, they get access to the weapons around here or wherever they travel? How does that work? Yeah, they, they'll actually go out and, and they'll have a weapon handler bring out all the guns. You know, we basically have a, a grocery list. It's an awesome looking grocery list and somebody just shows up with all that stuff. They mic it all up and they go out and shoot it. Uh, we probably have, I would say personally, I think we have the best probably video game sound engineers on the planet. We make the best sounds here in this building, I think. So we don't want to change that rate of fire. Rate of fire is a big thing for me to give up as a as a weapon balancer, as a game designer, to give away rate of fire, that means that I need, th that number doesn't get to change because mm -hmm. we don't want to compromise that sound. So that means that everything else has to get balanced out around sure. those, those, yeah. those rate of fire. And when we put those in, they're all true. Now talk to me about the speed that it takes on the game to employ the weapon from the low ready. Like I'm down in this position, yeah. I see a threat, I need to bring the gun up on target, and engage the threat through the sights. Okay, so there's a few different factors there. First, the first factor is the basic weapon. So obviously, if I have an MP7 and I'm here, I can bring that up really quick because it's not a heavy system. I'm not gonna get a lot of bobble because I'm not moving all that mass around mm -hmm. that I'm gonna have to compensate for. Uh, an M4 is gonna be pretty quick, especially if you have it sort of loaded out slick. If you haven't put everything in the kitchen sink on the weapon, mm -hmm. it'll be nice and fast. Uh, if you have an LMG, and you're running around with that thing and you decide to bring it up, that's gonna be a little bit slower. Some of our heavier sniper rifles are gonna take a little bit longer to bring onto target. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing, it's just the basic weapon bulk. Now when you start putting optics on, mm -hmm. uh, the fastest thing in our game is gonna be iron sights. That'll be the fastest to bring up. Uh, it might not be the prettiest. It's not as nice to look through as say a good reflex sight or a good red dot sight, but it'll give you that speed. Uh, sort of um, some of our higher end guys, some of our uh, operators out there have actually told us, and, and these are these are guys that are top in their field, they're, they, they, some of them are going back to iron sights just because it's a simpler kind of system. Not every, it's not for everybody, but it's something. Definitely that, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> but it's something that, that we offer in our game and we took that direct, direct from, you know, yeah, these that's absolutely. And badass that's just, guys. I'm, you, I know you guys have seen from, you guys have worked with a ton of special ops guys on the last game and this one, correct? That's I'm correct. just one of many, but you found out when talking to Greg offline here, um, everybody's got their own ways of skinning the cat and, and from a game development point of view it's a mother because you got to kind of standardize people and try to kind of herd that cat, kind of find that middle ground right. which can be very difficult. Because the, our system's so flexible we try to make sure that let, let's say that a guy really likes the Surefire 60 rounds mm -hmm. right, who wouldn't it's an awesome magazine um, you're gonna get twice as much ammunition in your gun as anybody else which means you'll only have to reload half as much. Right but your aim speed will be a little bit slower because you have a little bit of added bulk. Same thing with a, an underbarrel grenade launcher. Right. When you put that 40 millimeter on there, you can lay some hate out there really fast. That's, that's, you're probably gonna kill somebody with that, but the rest of the match, you're gonna be coming up a little, so you're gonna, pay, more belt. Yep. You're gonna pay for that the whole rest of the time uh, that you're running it. So pretty much everything that we do will have a cause and effect. You put a suppressor on, you're gonna get a little less damage. You put a longer barrel on, you're gonna get you're going to get more range, okay? 
but that's gonna add weight. You're gonna come up just a little bit slower. So we're really trying to give these guys the ability, like I said before, to sort of shave off seconds and add a little bit of flexibility here where they want it. Um, because guys obsess over this stuff. They, they want to dial it in and make it, this is a finely tuned instrument for exactly their play style. For Which is interesting how games have gotten that direct. I mean, how long have you been making games? Oh, about 10 years. Yeah, so when you started, yeah. the, the, the renditions were very crude oh, yeah. and pulling it, and think about how far it's come. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. If somebody had told me 10 years ago that we'd be doing this today, I don't know that I'd believe right. it. Right. Yeah. Unbelievable. Actually using brand name products and trying to model the stuff as correctly as possible. Yeah. Cool, bro. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.